take the court now. All right, we uh, want to welcome all you all tonight that are joining us. I am live on all of my platforms, including my website. So I, I do wanted to uh, make sure you guys are aware of that that are on tonight. Um, we all thank you for joining us, and we're going to get started with our study tonight. So Genesis chapter 11 is where I'm going to begin, verse 1, and I'm going to read the entire chapter. Ready? All right, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, called, go to, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly, thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to us, uh, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heavens and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And Yahuwah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahuwah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because Yahuwah did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Yahuwah scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Can I stop These you right the there? You sure can. So where did he scatter them? All the earth. I'm sick and tired of people thinking that nobody made it from the Middle East, from uh, Africa, from Turkey, from Iraq, from Mount Ararat, where the ark landed. The Most High scattered them across all the earth. So that meant that there were people already in the Americas. Well, before Christopher Columbus came, you wonder how they get there. They ain't all come on slave ships. This dispersion happened after the flood. That's all. Sorry. So just to clear that again, you said the dispersion happened after the flood. So that would mean that there was not, uh, Explain that first statement you said, the first, what you were saying about Africa. Say that again, please. Explain so it. so many people, well, better yet, I think there's a common misconception that, that people did not migrate from the motherland prior to being taken away by slave ships, especially to the Americas. Now, we already know that there were I lost you in silence. Yep. Yep. You're silent, T. Oh, hold on. One second. All right. Did I come I, back I, on? I, now I can... Yeah. Now okay. I can... All right. Yep. So, so what I was basically saying. Sense. Yep. So there's just a misconception that people did not leave the motherland until they were brought by slave boat or forced out of there. But I want to show that well before uh, any any type of messiah any type of uh, uh ad 70 jerusalem rome fight that no negroes were already in the americas and everywhere else that's why when christopher columbus supposedly came and discovered america there were already people here right and that's because mm -hmm. they have been here for hundreds of years hundreds mm -hmm. <laughs> if not almost a couple thousand years. And so, you know, people been all over the earth since right here, right after the flood. And, and, and just so I can add something here, if you all don't mind, 
Uh, it's very, I think it's very important to point out the fact that in Genesis here, it only, it, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really tell you why Yahuwah scattered them. It really just doesn't go into detail. It just tells you what, you know, this real simple line up here, uh, you know, that they've got in one language begin to do now, nothing, got it, da, 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 and you kind of skate down there to then it just won't be scattered. But we have to talk about why he scattered them and what they were actually trying to do. And that's the importance of the book of Jasher and the books that they uh, removed because it goes into detail of what it actually truly happened when they were scattered. And what they were trying to do was they were actually trying to battle and get up and fight the most high and his angels. Am I correct on that, gentlemen? Yeah, that is correct. That is very, very correct. And that's what we find in the book of Jasher. So I think that's very important when we're trying to do these, uh, especially from beginning books, because, it, it, you know, when we're studying this stuff out through Sunday school and uh, Bible class or whatever, um, we don't never really go into detail at this point here. I mean, until the last two years of my life, I had no idea what this meant. I can understand the part of the confounding of the language, but I didn't understand exactly what they did and what was the punishment for what they did. It wasn't just a scattering. There was a proportion of men that were turned into animals, apes, and uh, uh, elephants. Elephants. Yes, sir. That's what it's saying. So, yeah. So, so it's very important to talk about that because when you think about it, that's what they stole and took and put into school and trying to tell us that we came from monkeys. When in the when the facts really are, <laughs> what the Bible says that the Most High turned a portion of men into monkeys and, and, and elephants because of what they were trying to do at the Tower of Babel. So I just wanted to touch on that if y'all didn't mind. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. These are these are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arpachshad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arpachshad 500 years and begot sons and daughters. And Arpachshad lived five and 30 years and begot Shelach. And Arpachshad lived after he begot Shelach 403 years and begot sons and daughters. And Shelach lived 30 years and begot Eber. And Shelach lived after he begot Eber. 403 years and begot sons and daughters. And Eber lived 430 years and begot Peleg. And Eber lived, and after he begot Peleg, 430 years and begot sons and daughters. And Peleg lived 30 years and begot Rua. And Peleg lived, after he begot Rua, 209 years and begot sons and daughters. And Rua lived 230 years and begot Sarug. And Rua lived after he begot Sarug 207 years and begot sons and daughters. And Sarug lived, three, lived 30 years and begot Nahor. Sarug lived after he begot Nahor Nah 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 200 years and begot sons and daughters. Nature lived 920 years and begot Jerach. And Nature lived after he begot Jerach 119 years and begot sons and daughters. Jerash lived 70 years and begot Abram, Nature, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Jerash. Jerash begot Abram, Nature, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Teresh in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Cassidian. Uh, I want to stop right there. Once <laughs> again, this, <laughs> if you don't mind, I got to stop. <laughs> Once again, this is another story that's really not really touched on truly what actually happened. We just see that Haran died before his father, but we don't realize that that story goes a little deeper than that. When we read in Jasher what happened with Haran and the whole uh, idol worship that came from Tarak and, uh, you know, involving his son. So, uh, you know, I think that that's, again, something else important. I won't spend much time on it because we're not studying jazz for today, but we know that there's more to that story, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Abram and nature took two, took them women. The name of Abram's woman was Sarai. And the name of nature's woman, Milka, 
the daughter of Moran, the father of Milka, and the father of Yika. But Sarah was barren, she had no child. And Tarach took Aram, his son, and Lot, the son of Aran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's woman. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Cassidium to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Tarach were 205 years, and Tarach died in Haran. That concludes Genesis chapter 11. All right, so I need to stop sharing my screen, right? Yes, sir. Who's, who's reading next? Bill, you can give him co host or host. Okay, Bill. Bill, you need to unmute too. Done. You are now the co host or the host. All right, thank you. All right. Going to move on here to chapter number 12. Let me share my screen. Can you gentlemen see the supper up on the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. And you guys can stop me at any time during reading if you need to make a comment. You know how that works. Okay. Now, Yahuwah had said unto, LA, uh, unto Abraham, Get you out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed so Abraham departed as Yahuwah had spoken unto him and Lot went with him and Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran and Abraham took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went for oh, these little windows here. I can't uh, see the rest of these words. Okay. And to, they went I for, to, I'm sorry, I wanted to stop you and add a comment. Go ahead. Um, I think it's very important to point out the fact that when you know when he said in the beginning, get out of your get out of your country. And I'm not trying to sound churchy for anybody or preachy or any type of a scam, but it is the truth. It's very important that we point out the fact that in order for Abraham to get what he needed from the most high, the most important thing that he had to do was get away from those around him. And so I think that that's important because sometimes your family can lead you astray just because you want to stay with what they believe and how they are, how you were raised and what, whatever the case may be. I think it's very important to look at that because it's the first thing that leads off this chapter is how the Most High says, get you out of the country and get away from your family. That's a good point. All right, so... Yeah. Is T frozen? Okay, no, he's not frozen. All right. No, sir, I'm here. He was just skillfully still. <laughs> yeah, I was, I honestly, since, you know, I was taking a look at Haran and just d drilling down a little deeper on Haran, uh, not the name itself, but just the country. Where it, and so, you know, you got to realize when we talk about where, and I think me and Kimball had this dispute before. He was like, so where'd the boat land? And I'm like, Mount Arid. And he was like, that's Turkey. And I'm like, that's Iraq, <laughs> you know? And so like, we were both back and forth in like, where did the actual boat land? And, you know, we know it was Mount Arid and then we got it in Mount Arad, I'm sorry. And then we know that Iran, that area that he was in before he went to Canaan is Turkey. And then so... What do you, when you think about Abraham, the first Hebrew, his daddy wasn't a Hebrew to rock, you know, these guys weren't Hebrews and, and not because they weren't Hebrews, but Hebron wasn't really a place that they had lived at yet. 
And I'm not talking about their genealogy, their ethnicity, but what would they have been called? They would have been called by the land that they lived in um, most commonly. And so what is that area? What is Abraham's daddy? You know, I know he comes through the, the Shemite line. I'm not arguing that he's not through the Shemite line, but there wasn't a land of Shem. You know, yeah, he's a right. Semite by blood, but what land did they lived in? Who would they have been called? And so that's what I'm trying to nail down, what Abraham's daddy would have been called. And But that's a whole nother conversation. Right. I think you, one time you narrowed down to Armenia or something like that. Did you not? Yeah, I like, I like that as the area, Armenia, um, you know, as close as you can get to that. So that would make Abraham's daddy an Armenian, you know, but not blood, but where he lived. Right, right, right. Yep, makes perfect sense. All right, so we, uh, all right, so we got in verse five that uh, Abraham took his wife and his son's brothers, uh, their substance, the souls they gathered, and they um, uh, went forth into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. I think that that's what that word is going to be. Yep. And Yahuwah appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, Your seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto Yahuwah who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of um, Bethel. And pitched his tent, having Bet El on the west, and I on the east. And there he built an altar unto Yahuwah, and called upon the name of Yahuwah. And Abraham journeyed, going on still toward the Negev. And there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Mitzrium to journey there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Mitzrium is uh, Egypt. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah his woman, Behold, now I know that you are a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the uh, Egyptians shall see you, that they shall say, This is his woman, and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. Say, I pray you, you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and my soul shall live because of you. Stop right yeah. there. <laughs> we must not skate past the fact of how beautiful Sarah Sarai Sarah was. Now the Genesis just skates past the beauty, but when you dig deep, you find out that Sarai was fine all the way up, even past when she was 90 and barren and couldn't have a baby, she was still fine. And so he had to lie and say it was his sister because of how fine this woman was. They was going to do some do some bad to him <laughs> to get to his woman. Yes, sir. And I, I think it even said that there was not another woman like under Sarah. Like she was in a class of her own. There just was not another. I mean, so that's, does that make her more beautiful than Eve would have been? Because they talk about how beautiful Shua, Eve would have, you know, they say Eve, the, the you know, first woman was beautiful herself. So would that make, now that the Bible describes Sarai, would that make her more, even more beautiful than what Eve, what they say Eve would have been? Man, I, I don't I don't know, but there was also, there was another one, wasn't there, uh, wasn't there Isaac's oh, yeah. wife, the same it scenario? Was Isaac's wife. Yeah, yeah, Rachel. Or was yeah. it Rebecca? I think it was Rebecca. I think it might have been Rebecca. I think it might be Rachel. Because well, I think I Leah, because because remember Leah, Leah and Rachel were sisters. Okay, you're right. It was Rebecca. Because Rachel and Leah were sisters, right? Weren't they the mm -hmm. two the sisters and one was one was more mm -hmm. ugly than the other? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I got it. Okay. Go ahead. All right. All right. Let's see. 
what verse was I on? Okay, 14. Uh, number 13, 14. And it came to pass that when Abraham had come into Egypt, the Egyptian beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep, oxen, and his, and he has asses and men servants and maid servants, and she asses and camels. And Yahuwah plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's woman. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that you have done unto me? Why did you not tell me that she was your woman? Why said you she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to be my woman. Now therefore behold your woman, take her and go your way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his woman and all that he had. Now, from what I remember, wasn't that a situation where when Pharaoh was asleep, the angel had visited upon him and basically told him that this woman that you're messing with, you better not touch her. She belongs to this guy, and if you touch her, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bad day for you. Isn't that how that kind of went down? Yeah, the angel showed up, uh, approached him, but then they still did something very bad in the household. I can't remember if everybody got sick, broke out with lepers, they killed somebody. I can't remember, but something bad happened. And he said, get her up out of here, which we can read in Jubilees or Jasher. I just can't remember exactly what had happened. Something right, happened. right. Yeah, neither, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think you're right. I think it was leprosy, and it, it, it is found in Jasher. Um, that, the, the, the rest of that story is found in Jasher. Okay. So, oh, so Okay, so we're on to chapter 13 now, and uh, it's yours, T. It looks like there's only 18 in here, so... I don't have to do nothing to the screen. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. All right. And Abram went up out of Mitzriam, Egypt, he and his women, one man, and all that he had. So he came up while he was there because all those sheep, oxen, she asses, she camels, he, he kept all that, right? And Lot with him, his nephew, into Negev, right? And then, so Negev is obviously, it's a south, it's a place of drought, it's a district of Judah. So it's the south word there, right? They went, and then, and Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journeys from the Negev to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Upon the place of an altar, which he had made there at first, and there Abram called on the name of Yahuwah. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. So they had too much to stay in one area together, for the substance was great, so they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray you, between me and you, between my herdsmen and your herdsmen. For we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I pray you, from me. If you will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you depart to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the circles of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before Yahuwah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Yahuwah, like the land of Egypt, as you come into Zor. Then Lot chose him all the circle of the Jordan. And Lot journeyed east and separated themselves from one another. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the circle of the Jordan and pitched his tent in Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before Yahuwah exceedingly. 
you know what they were. And Yahuwah said unto El Avram, after that lot was separated him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, to you I will give it and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then so shall your seed be numbered. And then it says, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Shebron, which is Hebron, your Hebrews, fellas, but built there an altar unto Yahuwah. All right, so I've read to you chapter 13. Um, we've read at chapters 11, 12, and 13. Any questions from anybody listening or any comments? Can't hear you, Bill. You're muted, brother. I'm, I'm sorry. I said, nope, I don't, I don't have any. I'm trying to mute because my nose, I got a little cold. I have to keep blowing it and sneezing and stuff, so I'm not trying to disrupt no i th i think um i think it was a good study um i think maybe we should maybe maybe discuss i don't know how you guys feel about maybe trying to fit in some of these holes when we're climbing through genesis um that we may can pick up in jasher um to kind of puzzle put the puzzle together i mean i don't know how you guys feel about that but like right now we're going through this here and we know information that i think we should be able to put in here um uh, if we're going to classify jasher as a legitimate book how what do you guys feel about that i agree can we can we stop the recording though for this session yes, yes sir yes sir. Yep, let's right stop now. the recording here thank y'all appreciate y'all bless y'all yahuwah <laughs> <laughs>